nice formal definition. A recursive formula defines the nth term of a sequence as a function of the previous term. So whatever I get from my previous term, I'm going to use it to generate the next term. All right, so that's why it's considered to be a function of the previous term because you're using the answer from the previous term. Okay, now again, I could ask you to find the first four terms of the sequence. All right, so find, I'm going to write less here for my directions. Find the first four terms. And I'm going to give you the first term, or a sub 1, okay, is going to be our first term of 5. And then the formula, the recursive formula for generating this is going to be a sub n is equal to a 3. Now watch how I do this notation. a sub n minus 1, all right, plus 2, and then we're going to say 4n is greater than or equal to 2. All right, now, this right here is how you can tell it's a recursive formula. If n is this term, then whatever term I'm at, minus 1, would be the previous term. All right, so if I was down here somewhere and it was a sub 4, a sub n, a sub 4, then for here, it would be a sub 4 minus 1. Well, 4 minus 1 is 3. That would be the previous term. So the fact that I'm using subscripts, it's whatever this term is, and I'm going to use the answer from the previous term. That's what n and n minus 1 is referring to. Okay, so that's the information they're going to give you. They're probably going to tell you the term it starts with. They're going to give you your recursive formula. All right, and again, we're generating the first four terms. All right, now generally I do this a little bit different. Let's do um, a sub 1 as in my first term. They told me my first term is a 5. Okay, and then I want to generate my second term. So I'm going to go a sub 2 instead of writing out in words like I did the first time. This is the second term, a sub 2. All right, I'm going to plug in 3. I'm going to do 3, and then I want a sub... 2 minus 1. So I want to plug in, if I plug in a 2 right there, if I'm thinking 2, 2 minus 1 would say I'm plugging in a sub 1. So I'm plugging in the previous answer and then plus 2. 15 plus 2 is going to be a 17. So it's always the previous answer. But if you think of what's going on with the ends and those subscripts, it makes sense. a sub 3, all right, so I'm going to plug in my formula, 3. Now, the number I'm going to put right here, let's take a look at the subscripts. If this is a sub 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, so that's a sub 2. Well, my a sub 2 value is 17, the previous answer. So we're going to take the previous answer, plug that in, and then go ahead and add 2. 17 times 3 plus another 2 would be like a 53. a sub 4. Okay, now, obviously, what are we going to do? We're going to plug that 53 in, but I want you to understand why you're plugging the 53 in. If this is a sub 4, then this is going to be 3 times a sub, whatever 4 minus 1 is, which is 3, a sub 3, the previous term. So 53, because we're taking the previous term. So it's called a recursive formula when you take the previous number and plug it in. All right, 53 times 3 plus 2 is going to be like 161. All right, so again, I probably would not leave this as my answer. Probably in Math Excel, you're probably going to have to list them all with commas in between them. So 5 is the first one, and then a 17, and then a 53, and then a 161. So there's the first four terms of that recursive formula. And it's called recursive because you had to use the previous number to generate the next one.